because it's more fun. Don't worry. Hey guys, welcome to Real Simple Test Kitchen. I'm Dawn, the food director here, and today we have a very special guest. Hey Instagram, what's up? Over there. Today we have a very special guest author of Hot Off the Presses, hot new book, Healthy-ish, Lindsay Maitland Hunt. Lindsay, Hello. welcome to the program. Thank you. Um, so today we're going to be making one of my favorite recipes from the book. Um, truth be told, I haven't made it yet. But when Lindsay said that she was um, happy to come on, I was like, well, I want to eat this. So can we make it? And she said, sure, OK. So um, Lindsay's going to take us through like what healthy-ish is, um, give us some of her tips and tricks for cooking healthy-ish all the time, most of the time. Um, but before we get started, let's review the general rules. One, we wash our hands. Great. Did you Love wash it. hands? Yeah. I'm going to do it right now. Lindsay's going to wash hands. I did mine. She, she watched me do it. It's true. Um, and we also play nice, right? We say chill in the chat. If you don't have anything nice to say, you're now dismissed. This is a constructive teaching kitchen, and we aim to keep it that way. If you don't have anything nice to say, so long. Back to work. Um, but we are going to make this delicious miso chicken noodle soup. Recipe is live on Real Simple. Brooke's working the comments. She's going to drop it so you guys can check it out. Um, start there. Sound good? Sounds great. OK, so we're making this miso chicken noodle soup. Um, yeah, I'm getting the tofu out of here. Sometimes it does a little. A little you leaky do, thing, you so do, you can do it yeah, yeah. either into the trash or if you've set up a trash bowl, which is a great tip, is just to have something on your station so you can throw your trash out there, mix it all together, and yeah, that way your tofu isn't spilling all over your cutting board, which I did a little bit of already. We did. This, these are very wet. I would say very wet tofu. So yes. Um, so yeah, are. open over um, the sink maybe is a good idea, but so this recipe, Lindsay, calls for chicken. Right? It does call for chicken, but you can make it vegetarian. Just don't put any chicken in and also use vegetable broth. It calls for chicken stock in the book, but vegetable broth works for this soup, for any soups in the book. Generally, I would say, like, if you're a vegetarian, you can adapt almost any soup to have vegetable broth. Well put. Right. So I'm going to make a totally veggie version of the same thing. And I'm going to make a chicken version. And Lindsay's going to make the chicken version. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to cook and chat. Great. OK. Love it. So first, we're going to press the tofu. All right. So I pressing tofu, you did it? I did a little bit of drying. Okay, so pressing tofu is just like a good good practice whenever you're working with it. It's wet, right? You guys saw like this pool of mm. liquid that it just came out of. Um, but it's good to give it um, some attention with a paper towel or clean dish towel. If you're going to fry it, um, we are actually not in this recipe, but if you're going to fry it, it's a good idea to press it after you've cut it because um, it'll just, the paper towels will absorb more of the liquid and that will help get you crispy, crunchy outside, which is ultimately what we're going for. Nice. Um, okay. So this would be so good with fried tofu. So good. Mm. So okay. I'm cutting it into half inch pieces. I should do that too. Yes, please. I like to then sort of stack them up for convenience. If that's too high, you can do it however. And then just go back. I'm being kind of lazy. These are more like okay. three quarter inch. Doesn't matter. No, not okay. at all. Okay, great. Healthy-ish is like good for you, but not too good for you. But it's also about being flexible, not being too hard on yourself. Just like going for it. It's just an experience. It's delicious. It should be fun. No intense rules. No intense rules. So in case you missed right. it, on page, this page, 19 of Lindsay's book, Healthy-ish. New to the kitchen? If you're new to cooking and feeling intimidated, here are my nine key pieces of advice to set yourself up for success. Some of which we're just like naturally doing because we've cooked together and worked together for a long time. Yes. So it's just the way we are. Um, but Linz, can you tell us a little bit about um, some of these tips? Uh, yeah. So the first one is read the whole recipe before you begin. Kind of straightforward, but also easy to forget. And why, um, why so important? I think because, first of all, it helps because you can pull out the pots and pans you need. You, we're going to need a whisk in a second. We already have it ready to go. We're not looking around. We have bowls for the tofu, et cetera. Um, but also, it just gives you a heads up about what you're going to be doing so that you can have an order of operations, so that you can just wrap your head around it and makes, it makes cooking a lot more like easy and less, less likely for splatters and burns, I think. Well put, literally, one might say. Um, <laughs> Also, you'll see sometimes in recipes, ingredients will be divided. Like in this one, 
we're using soy sauce, but in a couple of different places. So if you read through all Another of it, one. then mm -hmm. you realize like, oh, okay, I'm only using yeah. one tablespoon here, and then the rest is going into flavor the stock. Um, so that's just like a small thing. We do that, there's a reason we do that in recipes. It's actually to make your life easier. Doubling down on ingredients, like using them in more, in, in more than one place, means you have to shop less, you have to prep less, um, and that's a good thing, especially when we're talking about getting like healthy, tasty meals on the table fast on a weeknight. Yeah. Which yeah. is our specialty. Make okay. Twice. All right. I'm going to wash my scallions. Can I wash? Uh, Please, you can already you wash, wash yours. No? Do you, you, will you wash okay. mine? Okay. I will okay. wash yours. Wash, giving scallions a rinse. Um, and in, yeah, in the, S, in the um, interest, it's the second time I couldn't think of that phrase. In the interest of following the rules, I'm going to read through the entire recipe. Now, Lindsay calls for two cups of chicken and eight cups chicken stock from her whole poached chicken recipe, which is also in the book, page 241. Um, but in the interest of like making this happen fast um, and additional learnings, we're going to cheat, use rotisserie chicken and boxed broth. Now, I did my homework before I got to class, which you guys know I don't usually do, and I wrote up a thing about how you can um, amp up the flavor of boxed broth. Brooke can drop that in the comments. Um, and basically, I stole the idea from Lindsay. This recipe um, is, that's exactly what we're doing. So we're adding, in this case, some miso, some soy sauce, and some scallions to already made chicken broth to kind of amp up the flavor. Exactly. Um, and I think like rotisserie chicken is actually really good for any, any recipe that calls for poached chicken or shredded chicken or anything. Like I am obsessed with rotisserie chicken. I use it all the time. It's great to poach chicken, but if you don't have time, like it's generally pretty cheap, I find. Very economical. It's tasty. You can almost always get like more than one meal out of it. Um, and you can make stock from the bones. You can make stock from the, the bones. So it's a really, it's a, it's a smart use of your prepared food section. Okay, guys. Okay, so we're slicing the scallions. What's the deal? Do I need to separate the whites and the greens? You don't, but just save some of the dark green tops for the um, for the end. Which I think we talked about a little bit last week when we were talking for so long about onions. Um, bless those of you who stuck around the whole time. Um, when we say in a recipe white and light green parts and dark green parts separated. That's all we really mean. It generally means we want to keep some of those dark green parts reserved for serving to make yeah. it pretty. Don't freak out if you dump them all in. So I'm just gonna we keep have a little, these here. We use this, uh, the same pile. Yeah, we can use the same pile. But don't I need the whites from, oh, for the dark oh, greens? I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, okay. we'll just have our separate piles then. Okay, so separated, separated. In an ideal world, we would you know, transfer these, but we don't wanna use too many bowls. Um, Okay, so we're going to use rotisserie chicken. You're going to do chicken version, right? Yes, please. Hand it over. Now, Samantha, Sabelle, if you're watching, this is especially for you. She bought a rotisserie chicken and didn't know how to, like, deal with it. Oh. Here's the thing about rotisserie chicken. You pull it apart. Like, that's, so how, you, easy. that's how you deal with Look it. Look it's just, like, coming. The, the reason, ooh, these oh. scallions are spicy. <laughs> yeah, so it's so, so tender. That's one of the things that's so great about rotisserie mm -hmm. chicken that you really can, you don't need a super sharp knife to get through it. You can just pull the meat off the bone. It's literally just coming. Yeah, so and I'm Sam. I'm two cups, so. Two cups, yeah. so. And I'm saving the chicken. I'm not throwing this out, the chicken skin. It's delicious. It's delicious. But since this is sort of in the, like, let's say Asian flavor profile, there's miso, there's scallions, and um, soy sauce, I'm keeping off because I think that this rotisserie, ch rotisserie chicken might have spices already on it. Mm, true, so, true. Just doing the meat inside. Um, so, okay, we've got our chicken, we're pulling that, our tofu's prepped, our scallions are ready. Miso paste. Lindsay. Yeah. Miso is a fermented food, as is kimchi, which we will finish this dish with. Talk to me a little bit about um, the benefits. Yeah, so fermented food has a lot of like probiotics, healthy probiotics in it. That's good for the gut. Um, and the theory is, is that good bacteria for the gut helps reduce inflammation. Um, I also just think it tastes delicious. True. Miso has umami. Umami, you guys umami. remember the big U? <laughs> it's a certain, I don't know what, very savory. Um, yeah. It can be attributed to things like aged cheeses, tomatoes, mm -hmm. remember, dried mushrooms. Anchovies. And meat. So um, it's a great way, especially for vegetarians, to experience that without 
um, you know, searing a steak. And most, I would say most miso has wheat in it. If you are gluten-free, mm. you can fi find um, wheat-free misos. They also make it from chickpeas. This one's from brown rice, but there's a bunch of different ones on the market. Um, a note on that, we've got some soy sauce here. We had it in the kitchen. You can absolutely use tamari here, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of bossy. It's OK, right? Absolutely. Okay. No, no, no. Yes. Tamari, tamari always. I, I sort of feel like tamari and soy sauce are, are generally interchangeable in the types of recipes that we write, which yes. are very friendly. Um, and tamari, look, just make sure it says gluten-free. There are some that aren't. Um, but this version will not be gluten-free because this is soy sauce. But um, tamari can absolutely be used in its place. Now, while Lindsay's picking the chicken, I'm going to go ahead and, Phil, come on back. Um, I'm going to get my stock going. This is, remember, I'm going to go vegetarian. So I've got eight cups. Do you guys know that this is four cups? One of these Tetra Packs is four cups, which equals a quart. OK? Math, we don't really, I don't know. I haven't been in math class in a long time, but I don't think we ever covered that. So this is four cups. Um, so eight cups, two of these guys. Um, a word on stock versus broth. Linz, you can weigh in here. Um, mm -hmm. When I learned in culinary school the difference, it was that stock you know, is the result when you simmer animal bones, like um, beef bones, chicken bones, fish bones, with vegetables, generally mirepoix, which is celery, carrot, and onions, um, other seasonings. You strain that, and that's stock. Broth is what happens after you season it. I think it's a technicality. Don't worry too much about it. Broth has also become this catch-all for just like flavorful liquids. Yeah. Um, so you'll see boxes on the market. Okay, this so one's easy open, but we can we can use scissors or the knife. Um, you'll see boxes labeled both, especially in this case. Don't worry too much about what you buy. Um, I did drop a link in that piece that I wrote about box broth to our road test, but Brooke, maybe you can find it. It's our, our best store-bought broths. Um, so we rounded up some of our favorites. I'm also, even though it's not on that list, I do really like the Swanson Organic free-range chicken broth, um, if you're going chicken. Um, make sense? So stock broth, we're not going to fuss too much about it. Um, we've got two big pots going. I've got my veggie in here. I'm going to grab scissors from you. Oh, scissors. Did we find it? Where, behind? Underneath? Guys, use your words. <laughs> Kids, Rebecca, I think there's some scissors in a thing over there. Amazing. Thank we'll, you. We'll be very, very careful. Great. Thank you. Um, OK, so we got some chicken. I've got vegetable. Now, vegetable broth, I will say, is a kind of a tough buy. Um, I do like this brand that we have here, this um, oh. more than gourmet. Um, but a lot of them just taste kind of funky and weird. Um, if you are open to using chicken broth, I would say use it. As far as boxed broth goes, I feel like they've really drilled down and figured out how to make boxed chicken broth that tastes like clean and pretty neutral. The others are like a little bit harder. Um, would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. And just you can read the ingredient list. And this one, for instance, this. And that O'Gran is just water, chicken, onion, basically the same things you would put in your stock. Some of them have other flavorings put in or maybe food coloring. Oh, my Ooh, goodness. Splash zone. My goodness. I will say this. So this looks like a little opaque. It's quite um, creamy. So we'll see how it tastes. And there's really only one way um, to find out. So but all you have to do at this point, we're kind of like done. Oh, you got it. Thank you. Right? We've got our chicken prepped. Oh, we, so here's what we've got to do. Now we're going to do the flavoring that's going to go in. So flavoring. Put this on to get started. Oh, that's a good idea. Guys, when we say like bring something to a simmer, bring it to a boil, especially if nothing's in it, turn the heat on high and cover it. OK? I don't want to hear like, it took me 45 minutes to boil the pot. Yeah, no kidding. Like, you just had the thing on low and like didn't cover it. Like, guys, keep thinking. I know you can do it. Um, Where the miso go? Oh, here it is. Miso I took. <laughs> Hi, Samantha has arrived. Um, OK, so we've got a veggie broth. We've got a chicken broth. We're bringing them up to a simmer on high covered. Here's what we're going to do next. Great. Lindsay, tell us. All right. 
So we're gonna take the miso and we're going to whisk it with some of the soy sauce, just one of the tablespoons, thank you. Um, and the reason you do that is because if you just put the miso in, it might stay clumped up and then you're just getting like big pockets of miso instead. Better to make a pourable paste. And since I've washed my hands, I can be touching this. <laughs> but you can also use a spatula if you haven't washed your you, hands. You Although can. that is rule number one, I think rule you said. One. Also, um, Lindsay felt it was important to measure this. I would have lazily like done this. That's one of the things that Lindsay talks about is um, cooking gets easier the more you practice. So Lindsay and I both know, you know what a tablespoon looks like, mas o menos. I'm gonna give you a tablespoon. Um, but that is something that has taken a lot of time and practice. So don't feel like, I have to measure everything and I feel bad. Don't worry about it. Like, you'll get better. Um, mm, it's so salty and good. <laughs> One of the other um, recipes in Lindsay's book that I love is the miso butter. Oh, yeah. Do tell. Yeah, so you just mix. It's a compound butter, which is when you put things that are flavored inside just plain butter, um, and you whisk miso with unsalted butter and make sure that's at room temperature, and then voila. Voila. You well, don't really need a recipe, you can just do it to taste. What would you use it for? Um, I put it on toast that goes underneath eggs, I throw it into pasta, um, or any type of grain, actually. I just put it in quinoa the other night, which was mm. delicious. Yeah, highly recommend. So but now that's look. a lot easier to get into the broth and not have lumps. Looks like almond butter now. Yes. Mm. I mean, you could put it with jelly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Crazy tasting. Yeah, sweet and salty. Okay, so. Okay. So we're gonna put this in there once that's at a boil mm -hmm. with the other soy sauce, the scallions, and the tofu. Okay, great. And that's kind we're of it. We're waiting those come to a boil. Guys, this is so fast and so easy. So when I was reading this recipe, I was thinking like, huh, flavoring stocks, what a great idea. So we came up with a few, um, few other options. I'm gonna tell you mine and then you can tell me yours. Okay. Okay, one classic chicken noodle. So onions, carrots, celery, saute, 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 then add your box broth, add chicken, handful of egg noodles, cook till tender, chicken noodle soup. Then. 15 min. <laughs> um, another one we talked about was onion, fennel, saute, saute, mm -hmm. add some tomato paste, mm -hmm. stir, stir, stir. Splash of wine, I didn't write that down, but I'm just thinking it might be nice. Then the broth, add some fish, cook till it's opaque, eat delish, wine. <laughs> Lindsay, what are some of your ideas for flavor? Yeah, broth? so I think like you could do tomato paste with some grated garlic and uh -huh. like some dried oregano, mm -hmm. that'd be delicious. Mm -hmm. What would you add to it? Um, ooh, good question. I mean, I would love that with some like little ditalinis. Ooh, ditalini noodles, yeah. and maybe orzo. Some spinach. Spinach. Yeah, spinach. orzo, a small pasta, put some, or like, yeah, even frozen spinach you could do. Yep. Very easy. Um, yeah, I think that the point is, is that even you can do it like this where you have already had the broth in the pot and you add things to it and that flavors it and that's super shortcut. You don't have to saute or anything. Which is what we're doing here. Yeah, and that's how this recipe came to be. Yeah. yeah. So super fast, super easy ways to like amp up the flavor of a box broth. Um, I mean this, like, see all the inactive time? We're just chatting. Yeah, which by we, your friend over. Which is what we prefer which to do. Which we are. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna kinda like scooch ahead. Mine is like almost simmering. Great, yours? go for it. Phil, come on back. Uh, let's see. It's coming along. Okay, do you think I can do this now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So we've got our miso and soy. Looks like almond butter. I'm just gonna whisk it in. You can see like it gets a little bit cloudy, but that's no big deal. Um, and I'm just going back with my whisk. If you were being really fussy, you could use a spatula, but I feel like I did a pretty good job. Whisking, whisking, whisking. And then what do I do? I add the tofu and the scallions. Mm -hmm. And the other, here, I poured you three tablespoons soy Ooh, sauce. Ooh, three tablespoons soy. So big it flavor. It sounds like a lot, but. It sounds like a lot, but there's right. actually no salt and pepper in this, right? No salt and pepper. Okay, because you guys remember, soy is real salty, right? Some recipes, um, I'd say like when there's less soy sauce, might ask you to one. season. Oh, sorry, Lynn. No worries. Um, might ask you to season in addition. And that's sort of up to you. But as always, we encourage you to taste this um, before you go just seasoning willy-nilly with a big three-finger pinch of salt. I'm gonna add the scallions now. Yeah. Um, that's the white and like green parts, just to kind of give them a head start and help flavor that broth. 
Um, now, this, while that like finally comes up. Um, and you also throw the tofu in. Tofu's going in too. How come I add it now? Because you want it, first of all, it gets flavor into the tofu, because one of the things I don't like is boring tofu. Um, I don't think anyone likes boring tofu. Nobody it has likes such it. a bad rap, but it can be delicious. So first of all, delish. it's gonna get infused with the flavor of the broth, and it'll be hot. Hot tofu, not bland tofu. You don't wanna put cold, bland tofu in at the end of the soup and then be like, this wasn't tasty. Now, you might notice how inefficient this is. I, made, I took like five trips to get this tofu into the pot. Use a bench scraper if you have it, or Ooh, yeah. be tidy like Lindsay and put it in a bowl. Both work. Yeah, so that all comes to a boil, and nice. then we're waiting for mine to come to a boil. So. And then we're waiting, and then, yeah. so that comes up, and then what else happens? Then once it comes to a boil, you're gonna add, you can do um, udon, or we have soba here. You can also do rice noodles. Again, like a great gluten-free option. Um, whatever you like. I mean, you could do plain pasta. Like, just do like what broken you like. spaghetti. Yeah. This is another one of those times um, to use up like bits and pieces mm -hmm. in the pantry or the fridge. Yeah. Um, you Super could, flexible. You could put like green beans or peas yeah. in. Frozen peas would be delicious. Yeah, frozen broccoli. or fresh. Broccoli. Broccolini. Broccolini. Bok choy. <laughs> bok choy. I love that idea. Bok we could we could riff all day. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna give you half. Of these. Yeah, so I think the original recipe calls for like a whole package of noodles. Well, for like eight ounces. Eight yeah. ounces, but we're sharing because we share well. We um, what's the deal with soba? Uh, it's just a delicious noodle. Delicious noodle, yeah. generally made of, of all or part buckwheat, which, fun fact, is not wheat. No, it is not. So buckwheat noodles, when made with all buckwheat, are GF. That means gluten free. Yes. Just want to make sure you guys are paying attention. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, do you think it's safe to put these in now? Yeah. I'm actually, I'm going to wait till it comes, comes up. to a boil, yeah. You know what we're going to do? I made a, made a big stink about keeping it covered. I'm going to keep it covered. Love it. Quick question. Yeah. Questions from the audience via Rebecca. Okay, Rachel Johnson wants to know, when you eat leftover soup the next day, do you keep the noodles separate so the noodles don't soak up all the mm -hmm. sauce? This is a That's great a question. Tip. Question is, when you're eating leftover soup that might have noodles in it, do you keep those separate um, or keep them in? I have an answer. Do you have an answer too? I have you an go answer first. and a suggestion. Do it. So I would probably, if you're going to be serving four to six people, which is what this recipe serves, put them all in, eat it, fine. And then pull them out and store them separately. That's a great idea. But if you're going to make the base and then maybe not eat it all in one day, I would just put in two, three servings, however many you're gonna eat. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. Yeah. I would also say, as a general rule, we talked a little bit about this a couple weeks ago. Look at Samantha eat her lunch as she brought from home. We're so pleased, she's a real star student. Um, you wanna use less noodles than you think. You know, you're, you've got this like huge pot of broth, you're tempted to just like throw the whole eight ounces of ditalini in there. Don't, you'll come back and you'll be like, what's this pasta dish I made? Um, most <laughs> soups, like big pots, could handle like half a cup, okay? No more than eight ounces, I would say, but that, even that's a lot. So err on the side of less, starch, that means like noodles, rice, grains, um, because they'll continue to soak up the liquid as it sits. Got it? Phil's coming on back. Jerry, get out back. of Phil's way. Come on back. Something okay. I'm gonna do is, normally I probably would use a spatula to scrape this in, but if you're not, what you could do is pour the remaining soy sauce in there and just whisk it again. And then that and then gets more of it go. out of the bowl. Nice. Up Quick to tip. You. Ooh, it's, too to hot. You. it's too hot in there. Um, and then I'm going to put the scallions into this bowl. Lindsay, I prefer to do less dishes rather than more dishes. Transferring like a pro. OK, I'm going to go ahead and put the noodles in. Do it because we're boiling. And I would say for almost all noodles, but especially soba, which I'm certainly less comfortable cooking than regular semolina pasta, just read the directions. They will all vary um, a little bit as far as the time it takes to cook them. Um, <laughs> funny enough, we threw the package away. Let's see. These say four minutes. Can you guys hang out that long? I think you can. Yes, so, but what we're going to do is check it two minutes because okay. that means that you won't overcook them when you're putting the chicken in. Well, you're doing a vegetarian version. 
But you do you. Lindsay, but. <laughs> Lindsay makes a good point. Um, she's going to want to add the chicken mm -hmm. um, before the noodles are totally done so they get warm and the exactly. noodles are tender at the same time. This is another thing. A lot of you guys ask questions like, how do I make it so everything's hot at the same time? Usually, we're telling you how. <laughs> so that, like, not to be fussy about it, but like, if we say tent something with foil, tent it with foil. It keeps the heat in, especially if you've like grilled something, like roasted a big piece of meat. That'll help keep it warm while you finish up your other bits and pieces. Um, so this is a perfect example. We're just timing it right so everything's warm and the noodles are tender at the same time. Yeah. It's not a secret. It's just directions, which I don't like to read anyway. <laughs> Another question from the audience. How long does miso last in the refrigerator? Oh, it lasts oh. a long time. Almost, I would like, say indefinitely. Yeah. Sorry, Rebecca is always telling me to repeat the question. How long does miso last in the fridge? And I would say the answer is, as Lindsay says, a real long time. Um, I would say almost like, indefinitely. Yeah, but I would say like six months, I would check it. I mean, keep it, keep it somewhere in your fridge where it's not going to be constantly changing temperature. Not that there's anything in here that's gonna go bad, but you don't want to be introducing any sort of bacterial growth. So I like to keep mine on the top shelf towards the back. Easy to reach, but somewhere where it's like not gonna be fluctuating. The door of the fridge fluctu fluctuates a lot, as is that like main open area, I would say. Because that's part of the reason why people started fermenting foods, mm -hmm. was to increase their shelf life. Huh? So things like kimchi, things like miso, things like sauerkraut, um, those all came about so people could like eat food longer. Huh? It was very smart. Um, OK, so Lindsay's noodles are going in. Noobs I'm in simmering. Pie. My heat's like a little bit low. I'm going for some tongs just so I can check. Um, I looked at the clock and it said, oh, it's been two minutes. So wow. per Lindsay's instructions, let's taste these. Well, you're going to go a little longer if you're doing veg. Mm. She's right. So we are going to go because question is, it, yeah. we want to go a little bit longer. Why? Lindsay's got to get the chicken in. Um, and that's going to take another two, three minutes to heat up. I don't need to add chicken. So look, see how we're talking about four minutes total? Two minutes, add a chicken. Two more minutes, four minutes total. It's simple math. I made it sound way more complicated than I need to. But so my noodles are in here. We're going to give them two more minutes. And we should be like right on track. Um, Perfect. So we're very close. This is also so pretty. You guys, we're gonna, I'm going to show you a little, a little styling trick Ooh. at the end. Um, but that is about it. We've got two more ingredients here. They are kimchi, which I mentioned briefly. Lynn, tell us about kimchi. Yeah, so kimchi is made, well, it can be made in a lot of different ways, but this is a fermented Napa cabbage product. It's delicious. <laughs> it's spicy. Um, I really like this brand. This. You do. You want to show the label. Yeah, Quink Quinkadentally. Great. Quink Tell us about it. Because I, I also shop for fresh dressed in <laughs> Whole Foods a lot. Um, but yeah, this has onion, garlic, ginger, scallion. There's red pepper. There's anchovy. A little bit of sugar to help the fermentation. And it also lasts a long time in the fridge because it is fermented. So um, full yeah. disclosure then, this is anchovy. I didn't read the label. So this won't technically be vegetarian. True. But it's OK. All of our veggies are actual pesco ovo. So they'll eat fish. Well, great. In or this you can house. find vegetarian kimchi. You can absolutely find vegetarian. Just make sure to read the label. Yes. Um, huge flavor from kimchi. You can stir it into, I think Lindsay has a, yeah. um, kimchi, a farro, mm -hmm. kimchi farro recipe. Super delicious. Yep. Um, so we're going to top these rolls with some kimchi, or scallion greens, and the piece de resistance, and egg yolk. Egg yolk. Before we get there, Rebecca, I think you had a question. like spiralized, would I ever add veggie spiralized noodles to this? I love that idea. That's a great idea. Yes. Super into that. I think zucchini would work really well. I don't know about something like sweet potato noodles. You might just um, need to give it a little longer till it's tender. Yeah, and also I think because sweet potatoes are sweet, mm -hmm. um, it might do a thing with the flavor. I haven't tried that, but if you do try it, please let me know. Um, but yeah, no, I think you could try any sort of spiralized ingredient. Awesome. Okay, another 
question is. I'm gonna put the chicken like in. Yeah. I mean, go wild with the veggies. Like, I love the bok choy idea. I love the idea of peas, any sort of frozen broccoli. You could also do a an adzuki bean. Adzuki, adzuki labels say both. It's a small red bean, um, and that goes really well in this sort of flavor profile, but any bean. I think like, the point of this recipe, which is why I love it, is that like you can just do anything you want. The point is you're making a flavor broth, Put noodles if you want. I love the spiralizer idea. You know, you can finish with an egg yolk. I'm one of us is doing the egg yolk. One of us is going to finish with an egg. The other thing is, if you don't want tofu, just double the chicken. Yeah. So like, don't right. don't worry too much. Yeah. Don't worry. It's soup. It's, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a good chapter title. <laughs> um, All right. Thank you for putting my chicken in. Chicken's in. It's just really getting love warm it. at this point, right? Yeah, it's warming through so that everything is hot, saucy, delicious. So when you eat it, you're not getting pockets of like lukewarm, pockets of cold, pockets of really hot. Like I, you want everything to sort of be in the same zone. All right. I'm gonna let you do the egg. Okay. Okay, so Lindsay in the very charming head note, which is the thing at the top of the recipe, um, talks about how her mom used to make a version yeah. of this. Yeah, so this is something my mom made when I was growing up and she would use box stock obviously, and she would put in soy sauce, scallions, tofu, chicken, noodles. There was no miso in there. That's one of the things I added. And the end, she would crack an egg yolk in and stir it together. And it, I didn't have any fear of like eggs or egg yolks. And I wasn't, I was just a kid. And I was like, this is delicious. And then when I came to making the recipe for my book, I realized that some people are squeamish about eggs. Some people are squeamish about egg yolks, the idea of raw eggs. That's a thing. The truth is, is that a lot of eggs are pasteurized when you buy them in the store. And if you're nervous, if you don't know if your brand is pasteurized, just you can find there's a there's a brand that specifically markets itself as pasteurized, so you can eat your cookie dough. Mm. I think that might be a thing about flower awareness to do it, but I do it anyway. <laughs> um, but if you aren't feeling weird about egg yolks, I love it in this because it adds some creamy richness to the soup and it adds body. It looks really pretty. Look how pretty. Also, point to make is like the yolk is getting cooked. It does get cooked. It's going into like basically boiling broth. Hot broth. And it's getting mixed all together, so it cooks really quickly. It's not like you're going to just sink it in and eat it in one bite. Do but that again, if you wish. But again, do that if you wish. <laughs> but as Lindsay said, like you can just leave it out. Definitely leave it totally out. Totally adaptable. Totally leave it out. Yeah. This is for you guys to play with. Exactly. I'm going to grab two, like, uh, maybe I'll oh, do it into your guy. Into my bowl. Exactly. So save the whites if you like um, yeah, for like an egg white scramble. I'm going to grab these bowls because we're getting close. We are getting close. I'm going to turn mine off. Lizzie, turn yours off. I'll turn mine off too. I'm Phil, do you want to come see? Check the chick. <clears throat> so we've got our veggie version here. You guys can see the scallions. Our noodles are nice and tender. Oh, that's hot. Very hot. Tofu has soaked up some of that flavorful broth. Can you see over here, Phil? Chicken version. Same situation, plus chicken. Nice, mm. nice. Hot and saucy. Hot and saucy, that's what they're going to call bite. this program. <laughs> uh, OK, so let's watch this egg separating situation. All right, so. We have more eggs if you need. Great. I, this is a theory I've never said aloud, but this is how I crack an egg Tell me. and separate it every single time, which is I like to have like a small top and a big bottom. Oh, yeah. Just like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then as it's starting to, I mean, if you're saving the egg whites, use, I like to crack directly into the Tupperware I'm going to refrigerate or freeze it in. Um, That's but a good tip. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, and then I sort of like let it start to hang. The, Really, really riffing off the cuff here. And then I. Back and forth. Go back and forth. And then I put it into the small side. And then I just let it sort of start to what I just did, which is like break the mucus. Or what's the right word? I'm, I think it's albumin. Thank you. Someone, some food scientists correct us. And there's going to be stuff, you know, sticks, but that's okay if there's a little bit of egg white. And you just go oh, back, and, yep, back and forth. Again. And then tip it. And eventually the white will become like very obviously separated. Yeah. And so it's just if you want to. And then um, maybe, maybe Brooke or someone, can you grab us like a small, small bowl dish right behind you, right there? Rebecca's going to, yeah, perfect. 
um, just like a holding cell for this egg yolk. If it breaks, don't worry about it. Okay, I think we should dish this up. Great, I'm gonna wash my hands because I just touched egg. She's very responsible, more so than me, you might notice. Um, Superheroes. Okay, so I'm gonna dish this up, veggie one. Now, here's what I'll say about dishing up soup with a lot of stuff in it. I think it's easier to get the stuff in the bowl first. Yes, that means agree. that means transfer with like a slotted spoon, tongs, whatever, and then come back and ladle some of the broth over top. And you're doing a little style. I'm doing a little style. Too. I Ready? Just, can I interject in a different yes. way? So Don and I met because we worked at Real Simple together many moons ago, and she basically taught me how to food style. And so if you look at the book and you think, this looks pretty, Don told me how to do it. OK, so did you see that? All I did was I pulled up the noodles and I gave it a twist. Generally, I would say I like my noodles like real wild, but Lindsay kind of did it in her picture, so I was going to do that too. Wild or not wild? Not wild. Oh, not wild. Okay, I'm, see, I'm coming back with ladle, which I don't have. Someone buy me a ladle or send me one. I'll use it on Facebook Live. Okay, so I'm coming back with the tofu and some of the broth, sort of like as much as you like. And, you know, now I'm just being like a nerdy food person and making it so you can see all the parts. Yeah, that, okay, that's exactly what I was about to do. Okay. So we've got our noodles here. That was a nice swirly whirly. We've got our mine's, chicken mine's version. Wild. Yeah, wild, wild and out. Um, kimchi? Let's do it. Okay. Kimchi, I would say like as little or as much as you like. Yeah. Other things. measure this, although there is a suggestion of a cup. There's a suggestion. You also could like chop it mm -hmm. if you um, are feeling like, whoa, kimchi. Whoops. But I think you can handle it. I also really like the sauce in here, so you can do that. Ooh, flavor the whole Ooh. thing. Ooh. And some of the scallions run on top. So I am ready to eat this vegetarian. Lindsay? Well, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna put my egg yolk in. First, okay, you guys Gail. watching this? Phil, come in quick. Okay, egg yolk is in, and then? Or scal. Scal, Scallion. pretty. And then can we see what happens with egg yolk? Yeah. What did I do with your spoon? It's in here in the kimchi. Oh. Breaking open. So see, swirly whirly. See, it's already basically dissolved. It's already like dissolved and delicious and you don't have to worry about it. And it just adds richness to this yeah. like really super quick and easy fast. Especially if you're doing it with box stock. Especially yeah. if you're doing it with box stock. I mean, there's not as much collagen and those sort of things that come out of chicken bones when you make it yourself. Look we, at that. Ooh, yum. you know, chatted a decent amount and that probably took 35 minutes, right? Yeah. Um, okay, let's give it a taste. I've already gone in. Mm. It's very delicious. I'm so glad so I decided to make this today. <laughs> thank you. Lindsay, thank you for coming on. Thank you. I was so happy to be here. This is the miso chicken noodle soup from Lindsay's yes. book, Healthy-ish. Buy it everywhere books are sold. Yes. Amazon.com, the link's yes. below. Um, Lindsay Maitland Hunt, author of Healthy-ish, right here. Guys, we'll see you next week. Same place, same time, talking about eggs. Okay, have a good week. Cook something good for yourselves. Tag it, RS Cooking School. Um, this recipe is up on the site, so you can actually cook from the recipe. I know I keep trying to tell you not to. Um, but riff on it, have some fun, and show me what you got. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks. Mm -hmm.